What's going on guys? Pretty crazy time in the world right now with COVID-19 outbreak going on at all. Everybody's kind of forced to be at home. I, on the other hand, am looking at the bright side of the situation because this is allotting plenty of time for me to do some much needed repairs to the house. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I repair parging on a block foundation. A little bit about my house, it's a cinder block foundation. And when I was buying the house, I was looking at the foundation and I, I noticed that some areas of the parging on the, the foundation had been failing and were starting to crumble apart. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you outside. I'm gonna show you what I do to repair the parging. I'm gonna show you the tools I'm using, uh, how I mix it, the mix ratio, how much water to add to the mix. And I'm also just gonna show you some of the challenges that you may encounter because uh, I did a small section of the foundation yesterday and I, I came across a couple problems and um, after doing this for a day, I, I think I have a pretty good understanding of how everything goes down. First off, before we get started, just a, a little note about what you should wear. Definitely wear a pair of work boots, jeans, long sleeve shirt. I say long sleeve shirt because yesterday the section of the foundation I was doing, there were a lot of shrubs and I was constantly rubbing my arm up against these shrubs and it scraped up my arm pretty good, so long sleeves. Also an important piece of PPE that I forgot yesterday rubber gloves. Yesterday I was working all barehanded and I got a lot of this material on my hands and at the end of the day my hands were just so dry and cracked. Just Rubber gloves are a really important thing to wear. So let's get outside and get started. All right, here's a section of the foundation that I'm going to be focusing on today. So first thing you're going to want to do is take a shovel, just get some of the material away from the foundation, go a bit below grade. And after you've done that, you want to don your PPE. So a pair of gloves, safety glasses, a uh, good idea to wear a respirator. I'm gonna throw one on in a little while here, but next thing we're gonna do is just start chipping off this loose stuff. You know, good idea to have a masonry hammer too. And you can hear a distinct difference um, between stuff that has no backing and is literally falling off versus uh, material that's stuck on the wall. Like that's a pretty solid sound as I get down here see how that hammer sound changes so all of this stuff that's all loose that's crumbling and you just want to take off whatever's loose if it's solid really no reason to take off can kind of relate this to dental work. You got to pick out all the rot before you can start filling in the tooth. So now that I've gotten pretty much most of the loose stuff out of there, what we need to do is take a wire brush and this is a good time to start wearing the respirator. And you want to give this a good brush. See all that dust? That dust really isn't good to breathe in. See what's in there. Good idea to wear a sun hat if you're going to be in the sun all day. Right now it's not the ideal time to be doing this because it's hitting direct sunlight, but as long as you keep the surface wet, I think I'll be all right. You just don't want it to dry too fast. But anyway, as you can see, I've chipped off all the loose and crumbly stuff, and what I'm doing now is just kind of cleaning it up, so you just want to take a garden hose, spray it down, wet it, try and clean out any dust that you left behind after you gave it a good wire brush. And uh, before I apply the new stuff on here, I'm going to have to come back in here with a bonding agent or some Portland. Just mix it up like a, a paint type substance, paint it on. It just helps the uh, the new mix to adhere to the, the block and the, you know, whatever's still left on the foundation. So, all right, now we can start mixing our mix dry and we'll move on from there. So first things first, what kind of mix am I using? According to my research for the Northeast, I think the best mix would be one part Portland cement to two parts masonry sand. So for every bucket of Portland, two buckets of masonry sand. Make sure it's Portland cement. You don't want to use type S mortar. I believe that's going to crack. And what you're basically doing is you're making kind of a sand mix, which is going to be resistant to cracking. It's not going to be that strong, but it's, again, it, you know, it's a decorative mix and it's a protective mix for the block foundation. I would recommend that you have two buckets. One is going to be for measuring, and the second one's just going to be a water bucket, which is very important. 
gonna want a sponge uh, coffee can or something to mix up some Portland cement. Um, we're gonna use that for a bonding agent. Um, also some concrete bonding adhesive. That's helpful to have. As for the tools I'm using, the main tools I used the other day, margin trowel, this is very important. Small trowel, I bought a cheap one, as you can see the weld broke on it and I had to repair it, got a little bit too hot, but a couple different trowels, flat trowel like this, about 12 inch. This is one of the main tools I used yesterday, really important. A rubber float, I used this a little bit yesterday, this may help you. Wire brush, that's a necessity. You're gonna need a, uh, what is the name for that, hawk, you're gonna need a hawk. Definitely a couple different pairs of gloves, uh, work gloves for when you're uh, chipping out all the loose stuff, and also a pair of rubber gloves for when you're applying the new stuff so you don't dry out your hands. And also I'd recommend a respirator, some safety glasses, because when we're chipping off the old stuff, it's gonna get a bit dusty and you don't really wanna breathe that in. All right, now that we have our mix of two parts sand and one part Portland, we're gonna mix it up dry. So just take a hoe and mix this real good. Yo, dude. I don't know whose dog this is. Yo, guy, hey, come on, get out of here. Now that we have that mixed up dry, before I add water to that, I'm gonna mix up my little can of bonding agent. And what a bonding agent does, it just helps with the adhesion of the new stuff and the old stuff. So this will just help the stuff that I'm mixing up stay on the wall a bit better. And it's pretty simple to make. I already made some earlier. So basically what's in here, you just wanna take a little bit of straight Portland Right, little trowel full, throw it in there, and take some water. And just mix it up, mix it into a paint. I really should be wearing my rubber gloves right now, my hands are gonna hate me later. And also just throw some bonding agent in here. Doesn't hurt. All right, now we're gonna start adding some water to the mix and when you do this, you don't wanna rush it. You don't wanna add too much water. It's important that you get this mix right. If it's too dry, it won't really stick. If you get it too wet, it's gonna slide down when you throw it on the wall. So just take your time and I'll try and teach you how to get the right consistency. A good quick test you can do to make sure it's the right consistency. Take a little bit on your trowel, slam it down, and if it sticks, that's about the right consistency. Good idea to wear a sun hat if you're gonna be in the sun all day. Right now it's not the ideal time to be doing this because it's hitting direct sunlight, but as long as you keep the surface wet, I think I'll be all right. You just don't want it to dry too fast. But anyway, as you can see, I've chipped off all the loose and crumbly stuff, and what I'm doing now is just kind of cleaning it up, so you just want to take a garden hose, spray it down, wet it, try and clean out any dust that you left behind after you gave it a good wire brush. All right, here's how you apply this stuff. You wanna take your paintbrush. This is your Portland and uh, bonding agent mix. And you just wanna give this a good coat. I painted this a couple times, which is a good idea. You wanna make sure that it's wet. If it's dry, it won't stick. Put a little bit on there. Push it in. Make sure you push it in. See this spot's a little low. Take some more material, push it on there. Smooth it out roughly. Right now I just want to show you a couple of the techniques that I 
have kind of learned through watching others and, and being out here and doing the job myself, I, I really understand the importance of uh, having proper technique. Like when I first started, I was just using the finishing trowel, that rectangular trowel, and I was having quite the time trying to get the material on there and it just wasn't going too well. So I went back online and I watched the techniques of some masons on how they applied this parging mix and it really makes the world a difference. So first things first, take your mud pan or your hawk and just set it up somewhere so you don't have to hold it in one hand. If you hold it in one hand, and you lose the function of that hand. So I've decided to keep my hawk on a bucket and it's been working really well. You want your mix consistency to be right. This is a little watery, but it'll work. So what you need to do, I'm gonna call this a finishing trowel. I'm not sure if that's the proper name for it. I guess this is more of a finishing trowel because it has rounded edge. Uh, the rounded edges, when you go over uh, your finished surface, it, it doesn't leave as many marks, but for the sake of this video, I'll call this a finishing trowel. So take your finishing trowel, a little speck in here we'll take out, and take your small trowel, and dish the material onto here like so. After you get it on here, and then you just go up to the wall. I like to start at the bottom. Push that material in there, just like that. This spot's a little low. Take some material, push it in there. See another low spot right there. Take some material, push it in. It takes a lot of practice. I'm not the best at it, but I'm definitely starting to get the hang of it. So again, take some more material. Start at the bottom here, push it up. Some material continue up push make sure you push this stuff in there use a little more on the bottom push it in not too bad it's a little tricky because I started on the top and now I gotta fill this spot in it's not like I can just keep going up so technique that I've been doing I'll turn it and I'll kind of work it back into itself like so take my material and work it back into itself see how I can use my other hand now if you're holding the hawk the whole time it's it's a lot nicer to have two hands to help control what you're doing technically this is called a pool trowel so you can take this now and just go over it once more and this just helps take out some of the lines or some of the high spots. Once you've gotten it pretty close, just take your sponge, wring it out and just lightly go over the surface and you can see it really brings out the sand. This will help hide all the little imperfections. This really does a nice job at blending everything together. It's a little high, and just take the sponge, work the material a little bit. Just like that. And that's pretty much that. Uh, don't be afraid to take on this project by yourself. When I first started this project, I got really frustrated. But after pressing on and, and just persevering, I've slowly but surely gotten the hang of it along the way, and this is a skill now that I can carry with me for the rest of my life. So, thanks for watching, 